when working with polynomials, we will often apply the distributive property. So if you have a times the quantity b plus c, you distribute the a to the b and the c. So that's a b plus a c. So an example of that in number one, if we have two times the quantity x minus seven, you distribute the two to the x, which is two x, and then distribute the two to the minus seven, which will give you minus 14. In the second one, we have three x times the quantity two x plus eight. So three x times two x, that'll give you six x squared and then 3x times 8 is plus 24x. Okay, so if you do the second two there, if you can pause the video and I'll put the answers up. Okay, so that's what you get for those last two. Uh, the thing you have to pay attention to is make sure that you watch your signs so in the last one here, negative 5x times a negative 9 is a positive 45x. So again, just slow down and, and um, pay attention to the signs. Okay, next thing we look at is multiplying two binomials. And a binomial has two terms in it. So if we have x plus 3 times x plus 5. The way that I look at it is if you if you take just that first term of x, distribute it to the x plus 5, and that gives you x squared plus 5x. And then cover up that first term, the x, and multiply positive 3 times x plus 5, and that'll give you 3x plus 15. Now just the way that I'll write it here. And try to line up like terms. So 3x plus 15. And then you can combine the two terms in the middle, the 5x and the 3x. So you end up with x squared plus 8x plus 15. Okay, and just like with the top part, make sure that you pay attention to the signs. So if you go ahead and do those few uh, b and c there, Okay, there's the answer for those two. Okay, and then moving along to number three, same directions, multiply. We still have binomials. The only difference now is that we have more going on with the terms. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 8. So again, if you do the same process and take the 2x, so again, I look at it as cover up that second term and take 2x and distribute it to x plus 8. And that gives you 2x squared plus 16. And then cover up the 2x and do negative 3 times x plus 8. And that'll be negative 3x minus 24. Okay, so then combine like terms. And there's your final answer. So take a minute and try B and C. C is a little tricky because of that minus X in there. So again, make sure you watch your signs and also make sure you write it in standard form, meaning the largest exponent first. Okay, so I'll give you the answers there. Part C looks weird because of the, the X term second um, in the first parentheses. It kind of mixes up the order of, of uh, where your terms are. So just pay attention to the signs on those and then put it in standard form. Okay, and then moving on to number four. Here we have the square of a quantity. So if you take x plus five squared, remember that what squaring actually means. It means that you multiply the expression or number by itself. So if you have x plus 5 squared, that means you want to multiply x plus 5 by itself. A lot of students make a mistake and they'll just say, 
x squared is x squared and then 5 squared is 25 but you got to be careful with that because you need to multiply the quantity x plus 5 times itself x plus 5. So when you distribute you end up with a middle term of 10x there. So the x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25 you get 10x in the middle. And then if you try the last two there again pause the video and try those and I'll show you the answers now. Okay, and then at the very end, 5 through 10, I give you two functions, f of x and g of x, and I want you to find f of x plus g of x. Well, that means you're taking those two polynomials and adding them together. So that's just a matter of combining like terms. So you get 5x plus 2. And then with g of x minus f of x, Make sure you put them in order. You'll see on my answer key, I messed it up at first. So g of x minus f of x. So that's 2x plus 7. Subtract 3x minus 5. So then when you do that, you end up with negative x plus 12. Because 2x subtract 3x is negative 1x. And then 7, take away negative, is adding 5. Okay, and then we have f of x times g of x, so that's multiplying the two polynomials. And again, if you want to pause the video, go ahead. And notice that in each of those, notice that we had x in the parentheses. And this is actually a very big point to make here. When you have the x in parentheses, it means that we don't have a number to substitute in for x. So you're going to get x's in your answers. Notice in number 8, we have f of 6 minus g of 3. So that means we know we're going to put 6 into the f function, and we're going to put 3 into the g function. So now, because we substituted values in for x, we're going to get a number for our answer. So we're substituting 6 into the g and 3, I'm sorry, 6 into the f, and then 3 into the g gives you 0. So essentially 13 minus 13. Okay, and then in 9 and 10, we have 4 times f of x. So you're going to multiply the f function by 4. So 4 times 3x minus 5. And then in number 10, we're going to square the f function. So when you multiply 3x minus 5 by itself, there's your answer. Okay, so that's multiplying and really working with polynomial functions.